already in his mother's womb, but a fine eloquence had been born. Do you all remember that Shariputra's mother and her brother often debated, and that his mother could never outwit uh, her brother? But when she was pregnant with Shariputra, she would always be able to defeat her brother in debate, since he couldn't outtalk his sister. He realized that she was about to give birth to an outstanding child, and he went off to study the doctrines of external paths so that he would not lose face before his nephew. But when he returned, Shariputra had already left home to follow Shakyamuni Buddha. This real wisdom is complete within all people. It is not only the venerable Shariputra who has great wisdom. Everyone has this genuine wisdom, but not everyone uses it. Most people forget about it, but everyone has it and has the capability of using it. Grasp it at Jewel Wood Peak, at South Creek. Where is this real wisdom? Is at South Creek, and South Creek is at Nan Kwa Monastery in Ma Pa. Township in Quang Tung Province, China. The Nanquan Monastery of Jod Wood Mountain is Tsao Creek, the Buddhimanda of the Sixth Patriarch. Oh, you think that's so far? How could I possibly go there to grasp it? Not only have the communists sealed the borders, but even if they would let me in, it is too far and I do not have the means to get there. That's good for it isn't necessary to go. Each one of you has the Jude Wood Peak at Tsa Creek, and it is unnecessary to travel far to seek it. The wisdom is within you. How do you meet it? Put down your upside-down mind, let go of your false thinking mind, earnestly work hard at your meditation when you see it in meditation and look into trend. Just that is Jude Wood Peak at Tsa Creek. The pearl, re, the pearl refers to the sharira or relic said to be a physical manifestation of the, of the above mentioned perfections. The relics of enlightened beings resemble infulgent pearls. The uncle, realizing that the child would be of uncommon intelligence and not wanting to lose face, went away from home. He traveled all over India and diligently studied all the extant works on logic, philosophy, and religion. Seventeen years later, he returned home, only to find that his nephew had left the home life to follow the Buddha. Angered that he had lost the brilliant child, he went to retrieve him. When he arrived at the place where the Buddha was dwelling, he challenged the Buddha to a debate on the following terms. If he were to win, then the Buddha would allow Shariputra to live and become the uncle's disciple. If he were to lose, the Buddha could have his head. The Buddha agreed and asked him to state his basic premise. The uncle replied that it was the non-acceptance of all dharmas. Thinking that by the use of such a premise, no matter what the Buddha said in debate, he would not have to accept it. However, the Buddha then asked, Do you accept that view or not? The uncle then realized that if he did, it would be in violation of his own premise, and that if he did, then the premise would no longer hold either. Then, fearing the loss of his head, the uncle impulsively ran away, yet after running a considerable distance, he stopped to consider his action and returned to offer his head to the Buddha. The Buddha refused his head but accepted him as a disciple. He became one of the ten great disciples of the Buddha and was known by the name Maha Kausthila. Form does not differ from emptiness. Sutra Form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness. Emptiness itself is form. First, form does not differ from emptiness. Is, is like, is not. 
Emptiness does not differ from form. The distinction is of a substance and function. Form itself is emptiness. Its true source is fathomed. Emptiness itself is form. The forms of flow has dried up. Mountains, rivers, and the great earth are only manifestations of consciousness. Dream, illusion, bubble, shadow, so it is. Be careful not to seek outside. Maintain the middle way. To cast down stained threads of cause is to come toward the thirst. Commentary. What is form? That which has a perceptible characteristic is form. What is emptiness? That which is without characteristics is emptiness. Then why does the text say form does not differ from emptiness? Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness, and emptiness itself is form. The sutra declares the ultimate meaning, which penetrates. Clearly, to the utmost fundamental principle, the mountains, the rivers, the great earth, and all the chambers, corridors, rooms, and dwellings are form. What is form? Form is within emptiness. Where then is emptiness? Emptiness is within form. Form and emptiness are therefore said to be non-dual. Form does not differ from emptiness means that they do not have differing characteristics. Emptiness does not differ from form. Also indicates that emptiness and form do not have different characteristics. They are one. Emptiness contains form, and form contains emptiness. On the surface, two are seen. Yet the actuality is one. To discuss form, let us consider the example of a table. Put it in a certain empty place, and it occupies the emptiness of that place. So that the emptiness no longer exists. Take the table away, and the emptiness immediately reappears. The place is then em empty. Before the table is taken away, did the emptiness exist? Yes, there was emptiness, but it was occupied by the form. The empty space certainly was not non-existent. Now, where there is emptiness, is there form? Just that there lies the origin of form. That is the form which is emptiness. We have taken a look into form and analyzed it so that it has become empty. What are they like? The body is characterized as a form drama, while the mind is categorized as emptiness. Mind drama is emptiness drama. The attainment of the principle of true emptiness is mind. Since the body is a form drama, from what does it come into existence? It is composed of earth, water, fire, and wind, the four great elements which come together and become a form body. Further, there is a place to which each of the four great elements returns. When a person dies, the water returns to the great element water, the earth returns to the great element earth. The fire returns to the great element fire, and the wind returns to the great element wind. Each has a place it returns to, so that the form no longer exists. Thus, the sutra says that form itself is emptiness, and that form does not differ from emptiness. Although there is the characteristic of form now, in the future it will be emptied. Thus, the verse says, form does not differ from emptiness. Is is like is not. Although something is, the is is the same as is not. Emptiness does not differ from form. The distinction is of substance and function. Emptiness and form are not different, yet they may be considered in terms of substance and function. Emptiness refers to empty substance, while form is the function of emptiness. Although substance and function appear to be distinct. They are fundamentally one. Form itself is emptiness. Its true source is fathomed. When you actually know that form itself is emptiness, its true source is fathomed. Your true source is reached, and you thoroughly understand. Emptiness itself is form. The form's flow has dried up. When you actually understand that emptiness itself is form, there is no false thinking. The form's flow ceases. Form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. 
it can be said that this experience is a particular attainment in your cultivation of the way. It might also be said that the form referred to is all the varieties of beautiful form, a Chinese figure of speech for sexual matters. Form does not differ from emptiness. The kind of pleasure obtained from real experiences of attainment from cultivating the way may seem the same as the happiness derived from form dharmas. Therefore, form does not differ from emptiness, and emptiness does not differ from form. Here you have obtained bliss from your cultivation, which surpasses that of male-female relations more than a hundred trillion fold. Therefore, if in form you are able to understand the principle of emptiness and not get a text, neither grasping nor rejecting nor receiving, that is emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form, for emptiness itself is form. In emptiness you experience genuine happiness, and the false flow has dried up. At that time, your false thinking has ceased to exist as well. Why? You have obtained a happiness which is even greater than derived from form. You have let go of the false thinking mind. Mountains, rivers, and the great earth are only manifestations of consciousness. Mountains, rivers, and the great earth are all form dramas which appear because of the consciousness in our minds which makes distinctions. If we can transform the consciousness which makes distinctions, then all the mountains and rivers and the great earth will not exist. Dream, illusion, bubble, shadow, so it is. All is like a dream. Everyone knows about dreams because everyone has them. But if I ask you why you had a particular dream, your, your reply may seem to be correct, but you will not necessarily be accurate. You might say, what I do during the day, I dream about at night. Or perhaps you will say in the past, I experienced something and as a consequence, I had a dream about it. However, you sometimes dream about things that you have no previous experience of. How do you explain that? You can't. And you can't say how you awoke from the dream either. This is to be murky and mixed up. As soon as you awake from a dream, you forget it. Think about that. You have a dream and after less than 10 hours have passed, you have forgotten it entirely. Now, let's consider the contents of our past lives. You are thinking, I don't believe they are past lives. If I had past lives, why don't I remember them? Take the dream as a comparison. The day passes and the dream of the night before is forgotten. How much less the less can we remember the events of our past lives? If a person is dreaming about being rich and prominent and someone appears in the dream and says to the dreamer, you are rich and a great official and you have many sons and daughters and a lot of property, but none of it is real. It is just a dream. The dream can't believe it is true, and he replies, What? I have amassed great wealth, am a high official, have many sons and daughters, and vast properties. How can I be dreaming? Regardless of what happens, the dreamer doesn't believe that he is in a dream. Upon waking, he realizes it without being told that he was dreaming. When I made so much money and was an official and had many sons and daughters and vast properties, it all was only a dream. It wasn't true. Without being told, he knows why. Because he has awakened from his dream. You should know that now we too are dreaming. I am telling you right now that you are dreaming, but you can't believe it. Wait until you cultivate, cultivate to understanding. And, ah, everything I did before was all a dream. You have done no more than dreamed. Upping, upon waking, you will know. Know from the ground up. I was dreaming before. All that came before was a dream. That This is what is meant by the word 
dream in the verse. What is meant by illusion? For instance, a magician creates something from nothing. He can also make something turn into nothing. However, although such illusions of change are not fathomed by small children who see the magic as real, and those see through the deception of the magician's transformations, they recognize the illusion for what it is. Bubble refers to bubbles of water, which burst after not very long; they are impermanent. Shadow refers specifically to a person's shadow. Is a person's shadow real? You may say the shadow is unreal, but look at it. There it is, existent. If you say that it is real, try to grab it. You cannot. You look, and there's a shadow. You try to gather it up with your hand, but can't catch hold. So is it real or isn't it? Say it is unreal, yet it still exists. Say it is real, yet it can't be gathered up. Where does the shadow come from? It is found on the north side of your body. On the yang side, the sunny southern side, there is no shadow. On the yin side. The shadow follows you wherever you go. The shadow I'm talking about in the verse is an analogy. Like a ghost, it follows you wherever you go. As soon as people who are afraid of ghosts see a dark shadow, their hearts respond with great fear. Their hearts go thump, thump, thump. Oh, a ghost has come! Is a ghost? Although originally it was just a shadow. When you're alive, the shadow is just a shadow. But when you die and don't have your body, the shadow becomes a ghost, and the side which does not have a shadow changes into a god. The god and the ghost, however, are not two; they are one. If you are full of yang energy, you move to the side where there is no shadow. If you are full of yin energy, you move to the shaded side. You move to the side where your strength is greater. If you have a lot of merit, you rise into the heavens. If the karma of your offenses is greater, you fall into the hells. Your fall, the verse says, dream, illusion, bubble, shadow. So it is. Just that's just the way it is. Be careful not to seek outside. Means in the middle way. You shouldn't seek outside yourself. It is all there within you. To cast down stained threads of cause is to come toward the thirst. What are stained threads of cause? Thoughts of desire, greed in the mind. In the mind is a stained thread of cause. Hatred in the mind is a stained thread of cause. Stupidity in the mind is a stained thread of cause. The taking of life is a stained thread of cause. Stealing is a stained thread of cause. Devon designs a stained thread of cause. False speech is a stained thread of cause. Alcohol, drugs, and the like are stained threads of cause. Cast down all the stained threads of cause and draw the family of the third one, the Tathagata. To have cast down the stained threads of cause is to have come close to the realization of Buddhahood. To have come toward the thirst. One who has realized Buddhahood is called the first come one. Not having realized Buddhahood, we are said to be coming toward the thirst. Only when we have arrived can we become thirst. If we have not arrived, we are not thirst. Arrived where? Where the Buddha is? Thirst is everything. Everything fully united with principle, with phenomenon. Not the smallest thing is wrong. Everything is right. Just that is to come toward the thirst. Emptiness is true emptiness, and form is a wonderful existence. True emptiness is not empty because it is a wonderful existence. Wonderful existence is not existence because it is also true emptiness. From what place does emptiness appear? It appears where the where there is existence, from form dharmas. Because form dharmas also appear within emptiness, the sutra says form does not differ from emptiness. Emptiness does not differ from form. Form itself is emptiness. Emptiness itself is form. 
That is to say, true emptiness is not empty and wonderful existence is not existence. To understand in the midst of unknowing, that is to fathom the fundamental source of the Dharma, that is your genuine understanding of the Buddha Dharma. Take, for example, the dream I just discussed. If you understand dreams and the source of their coming and the path of their going, if you don't understand how you had the dream and how you awakened from the dream, then you don't know how you came to be born either or how you will die. To understand why not knowing that is enlightenment, therefore the first cause from for itself is emptiness. This true source is fathomed. Enlightenment, you understand this truth. Emptiness itself is form. The false flow dries up. False thinking is cut off so that it no longer exists. If you want to comprehend the doctrine of emptiness and existence, you should take a look at that very place where there is neither emptiness nor form. The great master Hui Nang, the sixth patriarch, said, with no thoughts of good and no thoughts of evil, but just this moment that is the super real one Hui Ming's original face. With no thoughts of good is not being empty and with no thoughts of evil is not having form. The place where there are neither thoughts of good nor thoughts of evil is where there is neither emptiness nor existence. You should come and look into it and become enlightened where there is both emptiness and existence. Then you will be capable of understanding that form does not differ from emptiness and emptiness does not differ from form. The in true emptiness is true form, in true form is true emptiness. It follows that the form, form dharma is the original substance of emptiness and the emptiness dharma is the phase of form. Therefore, I have said that in the form dharma there is emptiness and in the emptiness dharma there is form. For instance, a mountain is a form dharma. If you were, if you land for the mountain, then emptiness appears. Before the mountain was leveled, did that emptiness exist or didn't it? Yes, it did. When there is emptiness, does form exist as well? Form is there too. So you can see that there were where there is emptiness, form can also exist. Emptiness and form are one. Form and emptiness are analogous to ice and water. Why is there form in emptiness occurs? The transformation to ice, the emptiness of fine dust collects, congeal together and becomes a form. When it disperses, there is emptiness. Therefore, emptiness is form and form is emptiness. How does the transformation into form occur? When the water, when the weather is cold, the cold in the air changes water into ice. That is the way the transformation from emptiness to form focus. How does form change into emptiness? The weather gets hot and melts the ice, but you say dust cannot melt. Remember this is just an analogy and does not imply that dust is ice.